G'day. Hey, Brian Ryan. How are you? Good. <laughs> so, at the end of it, it's Do you I mind beating in this video? No, he doesn't. He works at the rock shop. Do you mind? No. Oh, good. Because, you know, we can actually do it for a bit of extra feedback from the public. We've been making little videos about this. Yeah, is this yeah. Councillor Pepperell? Oh, okay. Who voted uh, against the buses through here? Yeah, well, this is um, just noting at how much, uh, how much sort of time and effort's been put in just lately to rip up all these parts and not replace them with cheap bricks so it looks like it's in a state of disrepair when it clearly wouldn't have been hard to replace what they've done with bricks at all seeing as they did it in the first place so it's pretty pretty obvious that um it's they're pushing and pushing and pushing for it to be an easy decision to rip it up i guess so and you're you're thinking about this well well mine is of course the same i've been saying this for a long time um, and I've spoken to other campaigners on other issues that this is um, how um, the council perceives to get easier, um, um, not um, approval from, yeah. from the public, because yeah. that, that when the issue comes up, they actually look at them all and they think, oh, it's you know, not very nice. And um, but having said we'll just that, have another span of what, you do months. realise that if the if the uh, decision would have gone the other way, with no buses through Manus Mall, there was a five, the 1.5 million dollar budget to upgrade it. There was. And of course, um, I'm sure that's going to be swallowed up in the um, the other um, solution that the council thinks is more favourable. Yes, yeah, sure. Um, of course, I don't agree still on the principles of the, um, the cost outlay of the project and uh, the, um, the compromise to the health and safety. This is Robert Mayo and he made an oral submission at City Council and he'll just tell me again about the, the line of questioning that he found very interesting. I just thought it was interesting the way that the, quest, the questions that were asked made it obvious that they, were, that they weren't going to change their mind. Uh, I can't remember the exact words but along the lines of what changes could we make to make this uh, idea acceptable or you know um, and was this before or after you did your this was, submission? This was a question. This was questioning me after my submission. Yeah. Right, right. So yeah, you, you, you know, felt the, like you council. wasted your time? Um, no, I didn't feel I'd wasted my time yeah. because I felt that I, you know, actually, you know, making the statement was worthwhile. Yes. But I just got the impression from that that they were, we were not going to make all that, take all that much notice. And then before they released the decision, yes. when they, when the, the, the council officers started putting out press releases about how misinformed the public were, you know, that we were a bunch of people who didn't, who didn't know what we were talking about, basically, right. um, I thought, yes, well, you know, that makes it obvious, you're going to put out that, what your decision's going to be. Yes. Mm, yes. That's very interesting hearing that perspective yeah. coming out, and it's important we actually get that to the public. Because I think that's what they were doing, and there was a process of push polling going on all the way through. Yeah. They're very, they're very good at um, what's the word? Dis being disingenuous. Yeah. That is, and I've I've struck this issue where you ask them a question, you ask people a question, and the the answer doesn't actually answer the question. Yeah. It's a it it, it talks about a whole lot of other stuff, uh, but. Uh, 
cl and clouds the picture, but doesn't actually give you a give you an actual answer to your question. Yeah, I feel sort of sad about it all because I am part of that process. I'm a councillor, and you know there I am. Um, having to oppose it, but um, I think I, I opposed it for the right reasons. I don't, I don't think the buses should come through here, and I don't think the consultation was valid. But that's my political position. I'm not saying you know that they didn't actually dot all the I's and cross all the T's. But I just think that coming round in the last week to talk to the retailers, that wasn't on me. Eh? So I, I um. I have a distinct belief that the current council undertakes consultation because it's a requirement, yep. not because they are interested in what the public's views are. Yep. And, yep. That's, and that's sad. Well, I have to sadly agree with you. So, well, there you are. So uh, that's um, Brian Pepple talking to a concerned citizen, a man who's takes the civic duty seriously. Thank you very much. It's okay. Okay, so um, this is uh, Brian again. We're down here in Manor's Mall and the protest to stop the buses going through Manor's Mall continues and as you can see uh, this is a mall which has a lot of people going through it uh, basically around the clock but at this time um, we're talking about half past 12 uh, during the day uh, the volume is quite high and also we're going to lose valuable open space here and the vista, the amenity value, is going to be taken from the citizens of the city. And I think this is not a, a good thing that the council is attempting to do at all. Yeah, we have Benjamin talking to um, uh, one of the reporters at the Don Post and uh, he's uh, very busy at the moment with um, his uh, preparation of his case for a judicial review of the decision by Wellington City Council. Uh, Thank you.